Hi, I'm Danny aka Tez and today we're going to be spending some time looking at how I made this jet bike. I'd like you to see this as a detailed overview. Detailed as in we will see the mythology to make the parts and an overview as in we won't see each part being made right to the end because a lot of the processes get repeated. In the long run it's going to take more bandwidth for you to download the file and more time for me to complete it. There is a few things I'd like to bring to your attention and that's while the tools do have limitations and rules I still take on the approach that there is no rules. There still are a few rules that I do apply to myself in order to get the results that I do. So here's a few just to help you along the way. One, always keep the geometry simple. Don't try to complicate things with loads of polygons right from the beginning. Two, UV unwrap each part before duplicating using symmetry. Otherwise you'll have twice as much work to do in the end. Also this would include checking for flip normals. 3. Make a folder for your project. Make subfolders to hold your texture maps and all related files. 4. Name things as you go. Don't skip on this as when you've got loads of parts of files you'll be glad that you did rename or name all your files. 5. If you see a problem don't say I'll do it later. You can easily forget and end up with multitudes of problems when you think you've finished your project. 6. Obviously save regularly. You might want to add revisions to your actual files like version 2, 2.1, 2.2 also it's handy to include any details in the file name as to any major changes. There's loads of more tips that I could include here but this is not really about what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial. So let's get started. I made this short animation to show you just how many parts I'll split this into. And the shape of an object changes drastically from a soft organic shape to a hard surface shape, it's sometimes best to make the two parts separately, much in the way it would be made in real life. Also, take note how simple the construction of the body is. There is no need to keep subdividing the geometry to attain a shape. When you add a few extra edges close to the current edges, you can easily sharpen out these contours while the rest of the contours remain nice and smooth and organic. Some of the tools you'll see me using will be in my custom palette. So what I'll do is I'll just explain where I've actually got these from. All of these tools here, the first three, come from the tessellation area in the vertex modeling tab. This one here is called the average weld. This one can be found just here. The circle from center tool. This can be found from the lines tab. Circle from center. We have the weld points. Again, if we go to the vertex modeling tab, we can see that this is where the weld points is. Inflate tool, this can be found in the UV and paint area. And we have the increase smoothing page up key, which you can easily access, and I won't be using this anyway. Another one is the bridge tool which can be found in the vertex modeling tab. The way I've started this particular project was just with a simple cube. Now what I didn't do is apply some initial tessellation which you have got the option just here. I kept it as one complete block so I can tessellate exactly where I want it and when I want it. So the first thing I did was is to just get the overall length of the actual bike. 
and the widest point of the bike. I then split it using the tessellate by slice in the real key areas that we need. As an example, where the bonnet is, where the dash area is, and where the seat and the actual tail of the bike is. From these initial tessellations, a lot of shape can be achieved. For instance, let's grab this edge and pull this back. That's split the bike down the middle so that we can use symmetry. So I'm going to use the tessellate by slice, hold the shift key. You can see that it turns red in the center, a little center box. Click once and we split down the middle equally. I'm going to activate symmetry so it's got the green symmetry lying down the center of the box and then we can start altering the shape of the bike. So you can see I'm kind of getting some basic form here already. I'm going to control and click so I've not got the, set, the um, in center one selected and pull this down. It creates a nice curvature there. Let's bring the front of this bike forwards and create another slice down the center. Go this way this time. We go to faces mode and select these polygons and pull these forwards. Let's bring this dashboard area up just a little bit higher. the same with this just to get a bit of balance so what I'm doing here is I'm just getting the overall base and shape here so that I can move on to the next step because I've got a drawing to actually go by it's easier for me to see exactly where I need to make alterations As an example, I might want it a little bit more wider at the front. A bit more rounded here, maybe. Now, if you go to smooth at this particular point, you'll notice that the whole thing just collapses into a lump. So it's too early to really judge. We need to continue in the low polygon state. Now, I know exactly where I want the actual seat to be, which is right here. And I know kind of what shape I want it to be as well. So I'm going to select all the seat area. Hold down the control key for the fast extrude and extrude it inwards once. Let's do the same thing again. Maybe select the back and lift that up slightly and push it back. Let's go to the back area of the bike and um, maybe alter this line and pull it up a little bit higher so we've got a nice area to actually build the light out of. I want the lights to be a bit more curved. Select these polygons, extrude inwards. Let's 